Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, subscribe down below, click the like button, all that good stuff. A little reminder for you, our new website, foottrading.co.uk, launched a couple of days ago. If you want to check that out, click the link down below, you'll be able to get that. Um, and on top of that, if you want to watch me do any of this sort of trading that I do live, please do click the link down below, come over to Twitch, we're growing massively rapidly over there. It's very, very good. But feel free to jump over to Twitch, come say hello, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. This video, however, is not a trading video. Um, every now and then I like to bring these sort of videos out. My last one I brought out, um, talking about the state of sort of FIFA 20, EA attempted to put a copyright strike on it and miserably failed because I argued it was fair usage. I wasn't saying anything untoward and I won because you can't just decide to get a copyright strike. Your content, that's not how the law works. Being someone with a legal background has its advantages. But... Um, this video essentially is, is talking about my experiences of icon swaps so far. So as you, a lot of you guys that know on stream, I've refused to do icon swaps this year because pretty much every single one of the icons, inc including this, this set of icons, every single one of the icons you can get, I can trade to in about a week if I'm that bothered. I could just go, right, I want that card. I want De Jong to a team a year, I traded to him in a week. Those sort of things, right? And I stand by what I said in my icon swaps 3 video that these icons are actually good icons. Um, and in that video, I said the grind is worth it. Now, I'm going to be blunt with you. Since I've started doing the icon swaps for the first time, in my opinion, the grind isn't worth it. I'm still going to be grinding, purely because you all know, as a meme on my stream, I love Prime Moments over Mars. I love over Mars full stop in this game. So I want a first time over Mars. So I'm, I'm still going to grind or attempt to grind to them. However, there are a few things to note about me. I am, oh, I've got to Division 1 on this game. I've ground my arse off to get there because I refuse to spend loads of FIFA points on this game. And I also want to keep some coin clinker to trade with. But I've ground my arse off to get the Div 1 on this game. I'm probably a gold three elite one elite sorry gold three elite gold one elite three player on my day on this game. I'm a good FIFA player. I'm not an incredible FIFA player, but I'm a good FIFA player. I'm solid. Um, and as I played icon sw icon swaps, I've looked at the teams I've come up against. Now, the first thing I want to say about icon swaps in the first place is they're a failure, and they're, in my opinion, they're an utter utter scam. And they're, they're all they're all part of this scam this year that EA have brought out, which is trying to make people spend their money on the game, their hard earned money on the game. As a justification for, oh, you might get some icons. That's what that's what icon swaps is all about. Now, the bugbear that I have with icon swaps, and the, the thing that frustrates me the most about icon swaps, is the fact that everything is geared toward first owner. Now, we all know, and it's always been fact, that EA are money grabbing. They've never really cared about the community. There's never been any sort of community vibe about um, about EA. They're all about the, the dollar. That's what they've ever cared about, uh, which is what, why it was so laughable. I'm not Kurt's biggest fan. I don't really, to be fair, I have got an opinion on Kurt. I don't, he's not someone in my community. I don't really care too much. But it's why EA tried to silence Kurt because Kurt was a dissenting voice in the community saying, actually, this is BS. This game isn't good enough. It's not been good enough for two years now. It hasn't been good enough for two years now. Um, and so he tried to silence him. What I found hilarious about that was the audacity of EA to say, oh, we don't like toxicity in the community. We try to create fun games. Now, let's run through why icon swaps and in general this game hasn't been fun this year we'll start with the game in general the first thing about this game when it was released it was unfinished let's be honest we all know that now the game was not finished when it was released um uh, not the first time ea released a game unfinished no man's sky um all those sort of things that you look at with ea they, they have a, they have a catalog and have a history of catalog of errors when it comes to releasing games and this is a multi multi-billion pound company who cannot get the house in order but the game was unfinished. We've had patch after patch after patch. But more than anything, I don't necessarily think the gameplay this year is as bad as people make out. I think we all know by now that the problem is the servers. And again, with EA being penny pinches and money grabbing, they haven't really put servers when they need them. There's no reason why a multi-billion pound company can't put servers relative to, to sort of one every few countries as opposed to sticking one in. They recently put a new one in Sweden. And okay, well, that's one extra one for the whole of Europe. It's, it's laughable. It really is laughable. The, the game itself has just been has been trashed from start to finish. It's just not been good. Um, and there's been a catalogue of, of failures in terms of the game in general. So if you look at, for example, I spoke about it before, but the community managers. Zaro, Corey. Corey is probably the most toxic person I've ever come across in terms of being a community guy. Someone who's there to answer fan query, fans' queries. I saw on um, Instagram, I think it was, he posted a story about going back to his million dollar house, etc, etc. And his expensive car that he paid for in cash and blah, 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 blah. That was paid for by the proceeds of what is essentially a game that forces young people to gamble, it's never really finished, never really lives up to the hype and the expectation. Every year it's sort of hype, 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 and then it dies down. Uh, this is why I don't spend FIFA points anymore. I used to spend FIFA points and now I trade and I'm a good trader and I don't need to worry about that. But um, I, look at, I look at them and I look at the EA direct communications that they use to replace 
what were ineffective, ineffective community managers. Now, I don't wish ill on these people. I'm not going to have EA to have and go, oh, he's targeting people. I will name people as is my right because it's not okay to, to be very bad at your job and get away with it, in my opinion. You probably both should have been sacked by now because they're not very good. Zara's better than Corey, but either way. But these direct communications. And let's talk about the fact that coronavirus is obviously like flatlined leagues. It's flatlined leagues completely, okay? So Team of the Week is going to be irrelevant. It's not going to be a Team of the Week. So we've got a tweet from EA Direct Communications. And this tweet was the most vague, useless tweet I've ever seen in my life. And it's, it's, it's a long line of vague, useless tweets by this account. And it really, really is. And it gets massively boring to say the same stuff all the time. But for example, here we go. This is it. We were not releasing Team of the Week 27 due to ongoing suspensions of football leagues around the world. However, it replaced with player content available in packs and via foot champion player picks from next week. Okay. This is an ever-changing situation. One we're working hard to adapt to as we move forward. We'll have more information on this and other info upcoming content next week. Okay, well, it's Tuesday now. This is four days later. Why have you not said anything? And this is what I don't understand about this company. But that's the game. We know what the game's like. I don't need to go too much into that. But I will talk about Icon Swaps now. Those of you who remember the good old days remember Icon SBCs being in this game, yep. And Icon SBCs were brilliant. It meant that if you wanted to grind the game, you could grind the game to get the best players you wanted. However, there was a League SBC grind last year that meant that people who grind for a long time and within the, within the realms of the game were able to grind to most of the best Icons on the game. What did that mean? EA didn't like that because EA thought, well, that's hitting us in the pocket because people aren't spending money on FIFA points. So EA removed them. And EA's reasoning for removing them was as bad as... If you remember last year, the Icons uh, SBCs, they refused to release the prime moments because it was a... They, they listened to community uh, sort of feedback and didn't want to release the SBCs because they'd be above the threshold. No, they didn't. They didn't release them last year because they were just like, well, actually, these people won't spend money on FIFA points because we're scam artists. Um, but what happened this year was they said, oh, it means it'll give people... When they released Icon Swaps, before the game came out, Icon Swaps was there and they were like, it'll give people better access, ex access to Icons in the game. Nonsense. What it did was give people better access to mediocre Icons and poor Icons for the first two Icon Swaps. And mediocre to good Icons in the, in the Icon Swaps 3. There's actually quite a few. That's a bit unfair. There are some really good Icons in um, Icon Swaps 3. But what EA did with the Icon Swaps was, I found it incredible. They turned around and said, we don't want toxicity in this community when talking about Kurt. What they then went and did was make the most toxic game mode I have ever come across in my life. And it is an utter disgrace. Now, I'm having people playing me with four... I mean, I was Div 1. I've now been kicked down to Div 2 because I'm trying to play with Campana in midfield and Gaia at left back. I'm trying to play full team of the year teams and prime moments, Hullitson teams in Div 1 to get my Overmars because I, I, I thought, why not? But I'm going to show you this. League 1. When four rivals matches using four, four first owned League 1. First owned Syria, first owned Bundesliga, first owned La Liga, first owned Premier League. Now, what does this do? It encourages you to open packs to get first owned players at bare minimum. That's the most simplistic way to look at that. It means that you're going to want to open packs so you get first owned players so you can compete with people in your division, okay? So that's the first, first facet of the, of the first owner crap, basically. However, what it also does is it means that every time EA release a player SBC, people think, oh, I'm going to do this. Because it will help for icon swaps. Now I've noticed a lot of my community go, I'm going to do this because it helps for icon swaps. And I look at that and I go, yeah, but hang on. That player that you're looking at doing there, for example, Benega, 150k. Now if you did that 10 times over, that's 1.5 million players for icon swaps. When realistically, there have been very few players that are worth 1.5 million in icon swaps. But it does feed an EA feed off the massive FOMO. And quite bluntly, EA feed upon the toxicity they've created in this game mode. Because what they did, they didn't set, set aside, as most good game developers would do, they didn't set aside a game mode whereby you would go and play objectives in that game mode against other people playing objectives in that game mode. They put it in Div Rivals. They put that in Div Rivals. So it meant that whatever division you were in, you had to rely upon somebody else playing, doing the objective to play against you in order for you to be successful at it. Now, I've, I've just lost, I'm going to be completely honest, I've lost five games in a row this morning trying to do the La Liga because I've only got two or three half-decent players from La Liga because I'm a trader. I don't really tend to do every SBC that EA bring out. Partly my fault, but also partly it should be my choice. I shouldn't have to spend those of my coins on, on needless SBCs in order to get one of these icon swap cards. If it's meant to be giving me access in more easily, this isn't really easy. But either way, I will get there eventually. It's not a problem. I've done, I've done three or four of them, I think, so far. Have I done three of them? I've done three of them. On the one cup wonders, I'm, I'm one away from doing. Um, so I've done two, but nearly three. So that's the mindset of it. But 
What frustrates me the most about this thing here is the fact that it's been put in a game in, in, a, in an area that was not built for that purpose. Div Rivals was not built for icon swaps. It was built for you to play match skill-based matchmaking against each other in a game mode. But what happens with Div Rivals? I refuse to do this, but people relegate themselves. So someone who is a Div 5, Div 6 player, nothing wrong with that. Some people are Div 7, some people are Div 4, some people are Div 1, right? But someone who's Div 5, Div 6 is now coming up against a guy who is actually a Div 1 or Div 2 player, but has relegated themselves down. I see Capcom Tom do it. I see loads of big content creators do it. Do I think it's okay? Not really. But do I blame them? Not really. It's, it's sort of a, a double-edged sword here. But um, they're playing against the guy. What they're trying to grind out for these accessible icons, they are playing against a guy who is way above their skill level, way better, better than another game, and it is bloody demoralizing. Now, I am probably a Div 2, Div 1 cusp player. I got to Div 1, expecting to get battered a few times because there are just really good players in Div 1. That's the whole point of it. But I am, I am getting demoralised by it because I'm sitting there thinking, well, why are, I'm using these players here and watching these, these guys come up with four SBC teams and four SBC teams and four SBC teams. And I'm thinking, so realistically, this whole thing was based around making money. It was not based around a community and making things more accessible. Put it short, this game is a scam. It has been a scam since day one. Another thing to think about with this is why the Enders promos? We have had the never-ending promos. You've seen the never-ending story? This game has been the never-ending promos. We've had promo, 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 promo. It has been non-stop. Number one, why? It feeds off a of FOMO, fear of missing out. You think, oh, I'm going to try and pack one of these, because number one, I want to pack one, because it's just in, in the nature, it's addictive, you want to pack one. But also, if I do pack one using these upgrade SBCs, it means that I can turn around and go, okay, cool, that goes into my... Uh, my icon swaps team. I can go to my icon swaps team and that be a way to do it, and that would be that be the way that I do it. But what, why else are these promos? Well, it means that, for example, if I don't get one, I'll use the upgrade SBCs and I'll rinse my club, which means I then have to spend money on FIFA points to then buy more players to keep building up my club because these your upgrade SBCs probably didn't give me much that I thought were useful realistically, so I've done somewhere else. And EA have fronted this whole situation, these upgrade SBCs, these promos, as being for the community, but they haven't been. They haven't been at all. Even now, Pez can't come out. People go over, over to Pez. The Pez movement hasn't really lasted like it would. We all knew it would die out. But th th there is still some people doing Pez. But it took a bit of competition for EA to step up their game for Foot Player Days. Now, Foot Player Days, in my opinion, was a good promo. The uh, Copa Libertadores was very, very good. Um, I like the team very much. And the two for one packs were half decent. Um, let's be honest, you, two for one packs is probably as good as it's getting with EA. I don't really do too many freebies nowadays. Um... But the, 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 the promo itself was alright. However, why did it take for Pez to start denting its market share after what EA did with Kurt for them to step up and do something? Again, put simply, EA don't care about us. They never have done. All these things that you see... The yoga thank you for the follow, bro. All these things that you see on this game that EA say for the community have never been. They've never, ever been. All they've been for is lying in their own pockets. And that's fact. But let's put all of this in perspective. This, this promo, this, uh, this whole thing, this icon swap thing... Was, was to make icons more acceptable, uh, more accessible, sorry. And I want to show you how that has failed. So last year, this is Prime Moments Corey, who had, an, who had an icon SPC last year and is one rating lower. So I caveat with that, but you'll see what I mean. So on this day last year, he was on average for 4.9 million on the market. Prime Moments Corey was 4.9 million on the market. He had an icon SPC, you could do his icon SPC, but he was 4.9 million on the market. This year, admittedly, one rating higher. He is 9.6 million on the market on Xbox. And he's 15 mil on PS. 15 mil. Three times more expensive. I mean, these are the prices right now, but realistically, they're not accurate. But let's just say they were 26 weeks ago. I don't know when that was, but probably end of FIFA 19. But he is 15 mil. In what way has icon swaps made him accessible? What it's actually done is meant that people can get the icons that EA wanted to give them. But if you're willing to spend FIFA points... Or trade 24-7, which I'm not willing to do. I trade a lot and I teach you guys and I've, I've got time to be traded 24-7. But if you are willing, if you're willing to spend loads of FIFA points, you can have these icons. You can have these ones here. These best ones here, you can have these ones. However, should you not want to spend FIFA points, you can have the average mediocre ones that we're willing to give you. And that is why this is an utter, 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 utter scam. This, this game from start to finish has been a money grab. It has been a scam. It is unfinished. Another patch came out for you guys. It will be yesterday. For me, it's today. Another patch to fix issues with this game. And yet that patch still hasn't... We're talking about listening to the community. No one wants drop back. No one wants um, over overload ball side. And they refuse to remove it. And it's all this sort of thing. It all feeds into this EA believing they're above the community. 
And even when they banged Kurt and they sent, brought out that SBC, called the shots, that pathetic SBC they released, that made them feel really good about themselves. That called the shots SBC that they were like, oh yeah, we called the shots, we're, 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 we're big dogs. But there is a movement happening. There were people saying, actually, no, we've had enough of this. We've had enough of this. I know loads of people that aren't doing Icon Swaps free because they're like, well, no. You, you, you told us that you were going to be bringing out like some really good icons we're going to be accessible. These aren't icons that I want. I'm bored of this. No, go away. It ain't happening no more. And it, even, even in the Icon Swaps 3, they released a Schmeichel. Schmeichel, they told everyone that we wouldn't be getting repeat icons. They then repeated our icon. Again, multi-billion pound company. You have to get that into your head. Multi-billion pound company. They can't get the simplistic things right. They then removed that Yacht Schmeichel and didn't replace him. No, use Yashin or Lehman. Neither of them have had cards. Use Yashin or Lehman. There is no reason why you couldn't go, actually, we're going to replace it with Lehman or Yashin. And they refused to do that. Again, this game is a scam. This whole thing is a scam. Um, I, I literally sit in a debate in whether I'm going to bother with Ivan Mars. I can just go and buy in for 700k on the market. It ain't that deep. But I look at this game and I just think to myself, where is it headed for next year, for FIFA 21? If it's headed this way, if it's headed the same way, I think EA are in big trouble. I think they're in big trouble. I think people have wised up to, to their scam tactics. I think people have wised up to the fact that EA really legitimately don't care about the community. I think people like Corey don't help that because people look at Corey and, and it, honestly, it sickens me. The way that he acts and has acted for the last year, two years, it sickens me. I think, I think legitimately it has been vile. It has been horrible. I do not understand where his toxicity comes from when realistically people that buy this game and engage with him pay his wages. Um, without us, he is nothing. Without us, EA is nothing. Um, but I don't know where it is next year because FIFA Direct is not fit for purpose. This game isn't fit for purpose. These promos aren't fit for purpose. It's boring. And this is why I say to you guys all the time, don't spend your money on FIFA points. It is a scam. It's not worth it. Don't do it. I can't stress that enough. I had to get that off my chest, lads. It's not like a massive angry rant, but it's just something to open your eyes up to. These SBCs they got you doing, these icon swaps they got you doing, all this sort of stuff, they're just not worth it. It's just, it's just not worth your time to be engaged with it because the more people that engage with what EA bring out, the mediocre content they bring out, the more they keep doing it because it's making them money. And until we say enough is enough, nothing changes. But that's going to be the end of the video, lads. As always, if you are new around here, subscribe down below, click the like button, all that good stuff. It is massively, massively appreciated. As always, if you want to watch me do this live on Twitch, click the link down below. Check out foottrading.co.uk for all your trading needs. But for now, lads, I am out. Peace out. I will speak to you soon.